want to switch gears to Nevo Ipi uh, combinations now because in renal cell carcinoma, we may now have the second tumor where uh, combination use of checkpoint inhibitor inhibitors uh, becomes another alternative standard of care in the frontline setting. Bob, do you want to tell us a little bit about that data? Sure. I mean, we can go back to what uh, Hans Hammer just talked about or presented uh, several years ago, uh, looking at the combination first in a, um, you know, utilizing Nevo and Ipi in different doses using, um, you know, Ipi 3, Nevo 1, uh, Nevo 3, Ipi 1, and then both uh, 3. Um, and, of course, the patients who got Ipi and Nevo at 3 each had to be censored out. Six patients had significant toxicities. Um, but they led after that the analysis of the data that um, uh, with the median follow-up of almost 22 months, the uh, response rate was almost 40%, uh, utilizing that uh, now the combination of uh, immunotherapy uh, working by different mechanisms, one's an anti-PD-1, one is an anti-CTLA-4, uh, but the combination was well tolerated and actually had significant activity uh, against this tumor, um, of course, based upon data they've had with um, melanoma and extrapolating and then moving forward. Um, and then uh, recently presented is the Checkmate 214 data that was presented uh, that also showed a significant benefit in patients who received the combination. And that was a, a phase three clinical trial comparing patients uh, with uh, clear cell renal cell carcinoma, intermediate and poor risk patient population, uh, but they did have favorable risk as well. And they looked at sunitinib at the standard dose of 50 milligrams daily, four weeks on, two weeks off, compared to uh, IPI-1, NEVO-3, um, given uh, every three weeks for four cycles and then continuing with NEVO as maintenance therapy. Um, with an improvement in all parameters that they're looking for compared to sunitinib um, in the intermediate and poor risk patient population when it came down to disease-free survival, uh, response rates, overall survival, um, even uh, some toxicity seemed to be favoring the combination of immunotherapy as well. Um, there was an issue, of course, when it came down to patients who had favorable, favorable risk uh, in that population where sunitinib seemed to have an improvement in uh, the parameters. But this is the start of a, a new focus about how we should be considering our patients. Um, still yet to be mm -hmm. FDA approved, uh, but you know, this is how we're starting to think how we're going to move forward in the next few months. Yep. Well, the thing that, that impressed me uh, with Hammer's paper that just came out in JCO uh, is the, not only the CR rate, which you don't normally see um, with uh, sunitinib or TKI, but also the duration. Uh, I think Hans's paper was like three years now. Some of these people are going. Uh, that's, that's impressive. So I think it's the new era. Interesting. So, Naraj, your practice now, you've got a lot of experience with TKIs. Is this the new era? Is this change for everybody? How do you integrate this, this new IO therapy into the frontline space? So, as uh, Rob just mentioned, uh, then the favorable risk category patients, so need to have outperformed the EP Nevo combination. It was very clear. So I would not likely consider EP Nevo like checkpoint inhibitor combination for favorable risk patients. I would be very hesitant to do that. That's twenty percent only, though. It's yeah, not, still, it's only twenty. I want to start with the risk stratification. Okay, yeah, I got it. So if you look at like favorable, like uh, if you exclude favorable risk patients, I agree with Dr. Vogel's saying twenty percent patients excluded. For eighty percent patients. Uh, definitely who belong to favorable and poor risk category patients, categories. Uh, definitely EP and EVO combination has shown itself to be superior to sunitinib. And then I start looking at the subgroup analysis with the caveats that we should not be doing subgroup analysis of a big phase three trial. We, I feel compelled to do that because I have options and those options have not been compared with each other and they will likely not be compared with each other down the line, or at least in the near future. So with the, with the caveat that, with those caveats, if I look at the intermediate and poor risk patients in the Checkmate trial who did not have PDL expressing tumors, really there was no PFS benefit. Progression-free survival benefit was not there with ep nevo combination over sunitinib. On the other hand, if I look at the PDL1 expressing tumors, defined as more than 1% PDL expression, uh, there was a really remarkable PFS benefit, like 22 months with uh, EP-NIVO combination versus five months with sunitinib. 
So that is something I like to keep in mind. Uh, secondly, if I look at the PFS benefit across the group, if you look at intent to treat like favorable, all favorable and poor risk patients, sorry, intermediate and poor risk patients, the PFS benefit was not there if you just combine all the patients. However, overall survival benefit was finally presented in the SITC uh, meeting just a few months ago, and it was present in like all patients in, in intermediate and poor risk patients. But if I look at PDL1 expressing patients, again, the survival benefit, overall survival benefit was a lot more remarkable as with a hazard ratio of 0. Point something like 4.5 compared to PDL negative patients with hazard ratio was 0. 0.75. 